Denise, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's so funny. Um, welcome, welcome to my sermon today. I, I really appreciate you joining me today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. And although I recorded this uh, before, Lord God, I pray that you will speak and bring to my memory what exactly you will have me say to your people, God. I praise you and I worship you. Speak to me, speak to me. And shift atmospheres today. Give to people what exactly they need to hear, Father. It's not my time, it's your time. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi uh, guys, thank you for joining me today. Like I said in my prayer, I'd already recorded a wonderful sermon. It was powerful. But when I went to play it, it didn't work. Because uh, what happened was, I went on Facebook this morning, and the Facebook thing, my Facebook Live thing didn't work, and I it 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 just didn't work, and so I recorded it on this, and I played it, and the sound didn't work. So I spent 46 minutes recording a sermon, and then it didn't work. And the Lord spoke to me, however wonderful that sermon was, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't what I had specifically to say to people. Rachel just let it be my time. And that's, and that's what he wanted me to say. Whatever you have planned to do today or in your life, let it be his time. We spend so much time working and worrying. Will we get this done? Or will we preach this? Or will we do that? And we think we're doing his will, but we, we take it on in our strength. And he's saying, Stop that. If you get a sermon, he's saying to me, if you get a sermon done today, great. If you don't, then it wasn't my will. And then sometimes, though, you, you have to understand that his will is greater than your failure. So, if my sermon then didn't go today, and I counted it as a failure, he would use that to strengthen me and to encourage me. And he's saying, the time is his. And he wants you to understand that all time is his. It's not yours. And... Although time is running short, you need to understand that he's allocated your time to do certain things. And your time is not supposed to be allocated for every everybody and everything. It is supposed to be time that he's given you on this earth to... Um, prioritize and to spend um, in every in, in every way gl glorifying him and when I say glorifying him I'm not saying hands up every time but every minute should be um, should be um, allocated to purpose and I've I purposed in my life this year that I'm not going to do anything that God hasn't instructed me to do, that God hasn't 
told me to do. And you'll say, how, how do I know it from God? And my answer is, you'll know. And sometimes you'll have to step out on a maybe. And stepping out on a maybe is okay. But understand that you can't be everybody's friend. You can't be there for everybody. You, you can't do everything. You can only do a God thing. And sometimes the good thing is not the God thing. And sometimes a God thing is always a good thing, but a good thing is not always a God thing. You've been spending your time spending spinning your wheels doing things that are that are good things but not God things. And he wants you to know that to to do the God things, not just the good things. And sometimes there are people in, in your life that you're spending time with that God is saying now that you have to lovingly um, separate from because in this season that person is not called to your life. A few weeks ago I had to make a hard decision when somebody were, was asking me to do something. I had to say to this person I dearly loved, I had to tell them no, because I'm not ordained to help you with this thing. This, and this is a woman of God, it's, and she's doing something phenomenal, but I, I am not ordained to help her with this. Did it hurt me? Yes, it did. Did it hurt her? It probably did. But I, I know that now I have to be very intentional with what I take on, who I spend my time with. The Lord is calling the church to be intentional. Intentionality will take you very far. And sometimes your intentionality is not God's purpose. My intentionality was right now to have my 46 minute sermon up. It was a wonderful sermon. That was my intention. But his intention was greater than my my own intention and, and I and I believe that God right now is calling the church to be intentional intentional with our priorities intentional with our purpose intentional with who we spend time with and yes we will have to lovingly say no to some things but your no can open up a greater yes for that for that person that you're saying yes to and your yes for something you're not purposed to do can destroy that person so no is not only the bad thing no can be a very god thing and the person and even you might not understand it at the time, but in the end, it will it will yield a greater result than you, than it would if you had have done had have done it because you're not ordained uh, to be everything to everybody, and the Lord's saying you have to be intentional. The Lord is calling for intention. Like, no, I really feel it in my spirit. I really feel that some of you are just running yourself ragged, doing, the, doing this, 
doing that, doing this business, doing that business, but he is actually calling you to be focused, to set your face like flint, to know what he's called you to do and do it wholeheartedly. Now, there are people that, especially when you're younger, he's calling you right now uh, to try things. What I said before was for the people um, in ministry, the moms, the business people who know that what God has called them to do, but they're doing all these other things. Um, they're helping all these other friends and they're missing their purpose because they're not focused. But for those of you who are, who are perhaps in your 20s and still searching, the Lord has a different message for you. What he's saying to you is, try things. You, you want to know God's will for your life. You want to know what God has purposed you to do. He's saying, try things. Do different things. Um, he's saying, um, he's saying to, to diversify, and in diversifying, you'll find what you're meant to do, and you'll know it when you find it. Because when you're young, you really, or when you're trying to find yourself or your purpose, I shouldn't say young, I should say, when you're trying to find yourself and your purpose, and you don't know when you're just waiting on God, and you're like, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And you're sitting on the couch and waiting. Purpose is not going to come to you. Purpose comes when you are working towards it. When you are getting out there and when you are volunteering. When you are, um, if you're interested in ministry, when you are getting involved in your church. When you are... Um, when you are studying different pastors, when you are, when you, if you are in real estate, when you are out there uh, pounding the pavement, and when you are intentionally seeking your purpose, that's where purpose meets you. I would say to any young person, because I know when I was young, I let I let people push me into a program that I wasn't called for because I thought that's where everyone was going. I would go there too. And when I said I would take a break for a year, people were like, No, no, don't do that. You won't you won't go back to you won't go back to school, you'll just stay home and do nothing. And and so I went to a program uh, that was a good program, but it was not the right program for me. And sometimes we follow our friends because we don't know what else to do. And I would say to any person, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to take a break before, um, before you get into a program as long as you are intentional about the break you're taking, as long as while you're taking a break, you're working, you're volunteering in everything, you're diversifying your um, field of knowledge, you're trying this and trying that, and it's okay to try different things, as long as the focus is finding your purpose. And I'm telling you, your purpose may change from, from what you first thought. Um, because um, my purpose in, in doing the sermon was first to, um, to talk about what COVID is teaching us. But I may get there later, but the Lord is 
But this is not my pur purpose now. My purpose with this, with this part of the sermon is to say to people, be intentional. If you know, if you have a focus and you know what you're called to do, do that thing. Don't be here, there, and everywhere, and it's okay to say no. And if you don't have a purpose, if you don't know, um, uh, try things until you find it. And don't sit around and wait, wait for, oh God, I'm looking for, for my purpose. What's my purpose? I'm sitting on my couch and not really doing anything. I'm waiting for the purpose. Purpose comes when you're working it. Purpose comes when you're working it. So you don't know what you like, so try different things. Uh, try volunteering at pet stores. Try, try just different atmospheres. And you will know what you're called to do for that season. And don't be afraid of the different seasons of your life turning out to be something different than what you expect. And know that your time is valuable. Your time is not to be wasted. Your time is just, um, it's very important. Because when you waste your time or spend your time unwisely, you cannot get that time back. So be very intentional about the time you spend and the people you spend it with. And also, my next point is to value your freedom. Uh, this is one thing that COVID has taught me, to value freedom. Before COVID, we used to go out without even thinking of it. We went to the movies, we went to restaurants, we went to this, we went to that. And when COVID hit the world and things shut down, we couldn't do that anymore. So he, he's saying, he's saying to value our freedom and never take for granted what we have because we we might not always have it. See, um, I read two books um, lately about uh, people, uh, women especially, in other countries. Uh, one book was called A Thousand Splendid Sons. It was about two Afghani women, and it talked about the culture in Afghanistan for women. Um, these two women, they were sister wives and they lived together. And one of the uh, sister wives, uh, um, to save the other one's life, she murdered the husband. And then she got convicted of murder and was um, executed um, for saving that person's life. And to think she was just trying to save the woman's life from being, from being um, murdered. And she was the one who was executed. And there was another book called um, the, Gr the Girl with the Louding Voice. It was about a girl um, in Nigeria who wanted to be educated, but her father sold her into um, uh, marital slavery at 15, and she really wanted to um, be educated, and how she, but there was a woman who saw her potential. No, not even potential, but saw who she was. Uh, a lot of people say 
And I've said in the past, um, I see your potential, I see your potential. But I don't think it's really potential because potential is what could be. I, I sense sometimes God sees who people really are and shows it to other people. And that person pours into that one person um, because of their expertise. And sometimes the expertise of that person in that season that, has, that God has called to help you is not the same person in another season. And also because relationship is very important. Not only romantic relationships, not only those kind of relationships, but relationships and friendships. And this is going back to being very intentional about your relationships and understanding that over the years, people, people's intent, people's purpose in your life may change. In one season, I I had my friend, uh, um, um, the president of my college, really helped me jumpstart my career as a writer. And now he's my cheerleader. He watches my sermons almost every week. But he's still in my life, but his purpose in my life has changed. Now he's not helping me with ministry, but he is helping me by cheering me on, putting little hearts um, on that thing, putting little lights or loves every week. So people's intention in your life will change. And, um, and that's okay. Um, the friends, um, the people you hang around with are very, very important. Be very intentional about that. Because the people you surround yourself with can either drain you or lift you up. Um, and... Another thing, too, is friendships, relationships uh, might change uh, throughout time. Um, so your close friend in one season may not, may be a, may be a distant friend in another. It's not because they walked away, it's because their intention in your life has changed. And that's okay. Sometimes God uh, operates with different people differently. I know for me, um, God has friends come in and out of my life or or God has people that um, have a certain expertise in this area and that area, so I can call on them, but they're not there constantly. They're what I what somebody called my blacksmith. When I need them, uh, we're friends in that way. But when I don't, I know they're, they're there. And friendship is not always, you know, the same person all your life or the same four people all your life. And you get everything from those four people. Sometimes your, uh, sometimes some people, some acquaintances or some friends are meant to be one one thing and another. Some people are meant to help you with your finances. Some people are meant to help you 
deal with your relationships. Some people are meant to help you deal with this. And in ministry, some people are meant to help you with your business venture. Some people are meant to help you with this. And not every person has a person that knows everything. I have this few friends and we talk about everything together. Um, that does happen. Not in my life, but it does happen. But in my life, it's more of um, people are there when I need them. I know they have my back when I need them. And when I need them, I call them. And when I, when I don't, they know I'm praying for them. And I'm not talking about people that use other people. They're there today and they say, oh, I'll be there and they're gone. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about um, you guys have um, an understanding that when you need them or when they need you, it's reciprocal. You guys are there for each other in a way that you you can be there. And not everybody is supposed to be there for everything. So sometimes there are specific friends that can help you deal with a certain situation. And sometimes there are other friends to help you deal with other situations. And it's not, and it's not a shameful thing to admit that no one person knows everything. God will put different people in your life for different purposes. Different friends have different expertise. Um, different people have different purposes in your life at different times. And sometimes the friends that, that have purpose in your life, you may not even know that they have that purpose in your life until you need that. There was an issue that I went to went through a personal issue and the Lord said, contact this person. And I said, okay, um, are you sure? Y yes, he said. And, the, and um, so I sent this person a Facebook message. And they helped me so much with this issue. I was stunned. I've known this person for years. We went to a church together. And she, and she helped me so much with this issue when I needed that. Now, will I come to her for everything? No, because uh, she's not um, designed to help me with everything. But there is somebody to help me with something. And I'm here to tell you, you may feel alone, but you're not. You may, you may feel alone, but you're not, that there's nobody there, but there's always somebody. And the Lord often works through people. You could say, all I need is Jesus and me. It's all, all about Jesus and me. But God never designed uh, him just to be the only one in your life. Often, God works through people, and at different times, in different seasons, God, God works through different people. And sometimes a person will walk with you and then let go. And sometimes a person will walk with you throughout your life. And sometimes a person will let go, but not be gone. Like they'll let, they'll walk with you, let go, but not be gone. They're always there if you need them. They may not be closest in that first season, but um, they're always there if you need them. If you need advice about a particular thing or whatever. They're there for you, and there are people in my life that I know are there for you, are there for me when I need them. So ask the Lord 
who have you placed in my life for to solve this problem? Who have you placed in my life for that problem? And if you haven't placed anybody in my life yet, um, where do I need to be? What do I need to do to get my uh, blacksmith to get the person that I need to help me with this problem? And with social media, although you need to be careful, there are so many people to reach out to for help with any problem that you that you have. Although you need to be careful, but you will find the person ordained to help you with this issue or this circumstance or this problem or this situation or just to give you knowledge or strength or encouragement and the Lord will lead you to that specific person. And um, there is no need to be afraid of hurt. Some people don't reach out to other people because they're afraid of hurt. And the Lord said, do not be afraid of her. Trust me that I will be there for you regardless of who hurts you or not. And if a person is not true and hurts you, they'll have to deal with me. And dealing with me and hurting you is no joke. And sometimes uh, the hurt is unintentional. And it's both sides. And, and God, you, you have to walk through that with God. And may, maybe have a, a difficult conversation with a person. Sometimes conversations, are, although necessary to have, are difficult. Especially after hurt. And communication styles can be difficult. But the Lord will walk with you. He'll never leave you alone. And he'll never leave you without an option for a person to help you. Whether it be an online person. Whether it be an in-person person. Whether it be a family member, a friend, or whatever. And my last point is value the people close to you. Value the people close to you. Tell, tell the people close to you how much they mean to you, how much they've impacted and affected your life, how much you love them, because it's so important. It's so important, and the Lord is saying, place value on those who are closest to you. You may think they, they know, but sometimes they don't because we don't say it. We assume that they know, but they don't. Uh, they don't know because we don't say it. The other day, I I was getting ready for bed, and there was a person. Uh, I said, "Oh, I'm such a messy eater," and she was cleaning me up, getting uh, getting the snacks off of me and crumbs. I said, and I said. Uh, at least, I said, uh, at least, uh, I said as a joke, you know you love me, although I'm a, I'm a mess eater, and she looked at me and said, yes, I do love you, and she was serious, and it almost made me cry, and I said, if the world's problems were just messy eaters, we'd be, we'd be all set, and she said yes. So, that moment, I didn't know that that person cared about me so much. Well, I saw her, and I know she cared, but I didn't know that much. It was really emotional for me. So, let the people around you in your life, your family and your friends, know how much they're valued, know how much you care know how much you love them, know how much you see them, and 
also to remember to see people. Remember to see people. When I say see people, really recognize people and who they are. Ask the Lord, who is this person? Who have you placed in my life? Ask the Lord to reveal who the people are in your life and lift people up. Do not tear them down. See, sometimes we have we have the uh, thing of being negative. We have the downfall of being negative and we just operate in negativity. But we don't need to operate in negativity. We need to operate in positivity and understand that being positive is not just rah rah this this is that being positive is changing your mind when you are positive it'll change your situation positivity is not just for you it'll spread to those around you and being positive will change your life and yes, negative things will happen to you. You'll have questions that will be like, what's going on? But being, what I always say is, God, this situation will come to teach you something. But the lessons that you get out of it can be either spun positively or negatively. So every situation will teach you something. Make sure you carry the lesson like what is this here to teach me and make sure you you spin it in a way that is positive because the lesson if you went through a diabetes um, a medical crisis the lesson you could learn from it was like everything is terrible. I'm I'm going to die. I feel like crap. Or the lesson that you could learn is, oh, um, I'm going to get through this. I just have to change my habits. Or I'm going to get through this. I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm going to come better at this. So the lesson that you'll learn depends on how you go through the problem. If you go through the problem in a negative way, the lesson that you will pick up will be negative. If you go through the problem in a positive way, the lesson you pick up will be, ne will be positive. And if you don't, um, and if you go through the problem, without picking up a lesson, there'll be no purpose to it. The, like you often say, you often hear, there's purpose to your pain. But yes, there is purpose to your pain, but will you receive it? Yes, there should be purpose to your pain. There could be purpose to your pain, but are you willing to grab it and receive it? in a positive way because anything could be spun in a negative way or in a positive way it depends on uh the lesson you take from it and what you what you want from it and the lord and the lord says god will get the glory from this but yes but it, he will if you let him, like, everything that you hear, like, purpose to your pain, and God will get the glory from this, and all of that, and double for your trouble, and all of that, it's not hocus pocus, it's true, but we'll, it all depends on your attitude, and how you go through it. There's only a purpose to your pain, if you take the lesson and and look at it positively 
and there's a purpose to your pain if you look at it negatively too, but it won't benefit if you look at your pain and its purpose negatively. It won't benefit you. It will bring you down. So, do you want the purpose of your pain to benefit you or bring you down? Do you want the devil for your trouble to benefit you or bring you down? Because you could say, oh my gosh, I could have double worry, double stress for my trouble. Or I can focus on the way God is, the positive way God is trying to restore me through this and have double restoration. I believe Job's attitude was all, was so positive with what he was going through, and it was not the fact that he got everything back. It was the fact of how his attitude was when he went through all his family members, his children, even his wife deserted him, but he said, though he slain me, yet will I trust it. So it wasn't even that he went through. It was his attitude while he was going through, while boils were on his body and pus was probably coming out and bleeding and stuff. He still said, I will trust the Lord. And that made everything come back well. And not only did it come back well, it came back greater with a positiveness and a greater appreciation. Because he could have gotten everything back, but he could have still said, oh, it may go again. I have to be so careful. I, I'm not going to rejoice because it's all going to go again. So it's all about how you go through. Yes, there's purpose to your pain if you choose to receive it. And if you have, the, have the, a positive attitude, a godly attitude to go through it. That is the purpose. How you go through it. And what you take from, from it and your attitude while you're going through it. Because a person, two people can get um, diagnosed with the same cancer. One person can be like, oh my gosh, this is going to kill me. And it is going to kill you if you have that attitude. And But one person could be like, I will get through this. This won't beat me. And this is not positive attitude. This is... This is life. This is how God wants us to live. Um, we can live in strength or weakness. We can take the words of people or, or the words of Christ. We can take negative lessons from our, from our um, problems. Or we can take pain from our problems. Or we can take prosperity from our problems. Yes, God is with you in your, in your pain. But your attitude will crucify you or lift you up in that pain. Although God is with you in your pain, you have to understand that how you go through it is key. Because if you go through it with a defeatist attitude, I'm never going to get out of this, it's going to break you. And But if you go through it with, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens you and really believe it, um, you will see change. And the situation might not change, but your attitude, by your attitude, the situation, uh, your perspective will will be different. And all you need is a change of perspective. For your situation right now, 
all you need is a change of perspective. And, and the Lord's saying, if you're willing, I will give you a change of perspective. I will make you see the people in your life how you need to, to, I will make you value the people in your life. How you need to, I will make you value your time. I will make you value your purpose. I will make you value your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done today. And I thank you for this word. I thank you for uh, touching lives and touching hearts today. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this sermon. I definitely enjoyed doing it for the second time. It is just awesome. And <laughs> it's so funny because I had all the points plus more. It's so good how God works. I thought it was over, but um, God had a different plan and I'm just it's, it's not over. It's just beginning. And it looked as if it was over here. Oh, and I'm standing here only because you away. And what always be like this? The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Oh, sooner or later, it will turn in my favor. He's turning around, he's turning around to me. Around for me, around for me, around for me, it's turning around for me, around for me, around for me, around for me, it's turning around for me. Turn around, just turn around, just turn around for me. Turn around, just turn around, just turn around for me. He's the God of the turn around. He's the God of the turn around. He blesses the hair right now. He's the God of sorrow. He's the God of the turnaround. He's the God of the turnaround. His words in the human heart. He's the God of the turnaround. He is here to heal. He is here. To restore, he is here to do so much more than you ever dreamed. Believe and see that he's the God of the turnaround, the God of the turnaround. That's why I'm saying that here right now, he's the God of the turnaround. He's the God of the turnaround. The God of the turnaround. It's what else is the hand of the Lord. He's the God of the turnaround. Bye, guys. See you later.
感じでしたね。Give me a second here, guys. Break every chain, God. Break every chain, God. I don't know what you're doing right now, but break every chain, God. There's a reason for everything. 